I do. I, I think that uh, this environment is going to be with us certainly through this year and, and likely into next year. And that is because inflation is likely going to remain persistent and sticky, even though the rate of change will slow as we get into the back half of the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but because of that stickiness, interest rates will remain elevated. Uh, central banks will still be tightening monetary policy. And, and most likely, we're on the cusp of uh, you know, an economic downturn. So while nothing is 100 percent, I would say 99 percent chance that the U.S. economy enters a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw a, a negative GDP print in the first quarter, even though there's some quirkiness in that figure. Uh, the Atlanta Fed has estimated no growth in the second quarter. And even if we get modest growth, whether it's plus one, zero, or minus one, it's still going to feel the same. It's still going to feel very sluggish. But it would be hard to avoid a recession in the midst of what is the most aggressive monetary tightening that we've seen in 40 years. So I think the, 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 the short-term interest rates that are very sensitive to what the Fed will eventually do have priced in more than what I think the Fed will eventually do. So I think short-term interest rates with the two-year yield being at a call of three and a quarter-ish, uh, we probably won't see something much higher than that. Longer-term interest rates are more difficult to predict because you have the influence of, of what's going to happen with European bonds as the ECB removes policy uh, accommodation, what will happen with the Japanese bond market as there's growing pressure on the Bank of Japan to let interest rates rise. And those influences will be pretty big with long-term U.S. Uh, interest rates. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's more difficult to predict how far long-term interest rates can rise from here, even though they probably still have more room to go on the upside. But I'm not sure that how much relative to more of my confidence on the short part of the yield curve. So I, I think that the bull market in commodities, particularly energy, uh, agriculture, uh, even, even industrial metals and precious metals, notwithstanding some short-term corrections, still has a ways to go. I think cheap value stocks, not just in the U.S., but around the world, will well outperform the growth, the expensive stuff. Uh, that's less expensive now, but will outperform uh, that part of the market looking out over the next five-plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we like uh, emerging Asian markets. Mm -hmm. uh, also, as a cheap market, when looking out over the next 10 years, for those investors looking for growth, and looking for cheaper valuations relative to the U.S. So Bleakley Advisory Group is a uh, wealth management firm mm -hmm. that has its main uh, office in New Jersey, but it also has offices in, in other cities in, in, in the country. So we have about almost 60 different advisors that are, are managing client money, and we help them uh, through all different types of financial planning, but also obviously trying to maneuver through these uh, investment markets. It can be anyone who's freshly out of college to very high net worth individuals who are retired. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it spans the range of, of demographics.